All right. Uh, we're having technical problems today. Is that how we're going to do it? Is this how it's going to be? There we go. Okay. We're going to start. Okay. We're going to start. Welcome to the mop up for May 16th, 2022. Happy birthday to my uncle Lou. You don't look a day over deceased. I wish you two more birthdays. Uncle Lou, two more birthdays. Then you're staying way too long at the party and we need to clean up. I'm David Feldman coming to you from an air shaft overlooking a parking garage somewhere in Manhattan where the temperature is 73 degrees and sunny. Well, there's some illegal stakes coming into our country and Kimberly Gargoyle wants to warn us about them. Great states, they only want to eat good ranchers, and I don't blame them. I'm here at these beautiful states from goodranchers.com, and this is the way you show your family you love them, by buying this meat that is born and raised here in the United States. Fantastic quality, USDA. I don't know if you know this or not, but 85% of the meat that they sell in stores today is not even from the United States. It's from overseas, from other countries, and you don't even know what's in it or what you're really getting. Every time we cook with good ranchers, it's absolutely fantastic. And that's what you get with this. <laughs> that's Kimberly. That's Kimberly Gargoyle selling uh, legal steaks. A lot of steaks in America are illegal. Mexico is not sending us their best and their brightest steaks. They're sending their drug dealers, their criminals, their rapists. I'm sure some of their steaks are good cows, but uh, only we should only eat legal steaks from here in the United States. Rough news the past couple of days and considering recent events over the past weekend, I think it's finally time to have a serious conversation about serious conversations. Naomi Judd, her family says the singer died at the age of 76 from a self-inflicted gunshot. Like I said, we need to have a serious conversation in this country about serious conversations. The Centers for Disease Control says 53% of all suicides involve firearms. America is facing an epidemic of suicide. The right wing will remind us that even though Illinois has some of the strictest gun laws in America, Chicago can't seem to put an end to gun violence. But what the white wing, the white, the white or right wing won't tell you is that Illinois also has one of the lowest suicide rates in America. Why? Because it's hard to get a gun in Illinois. Like I said, we need to have a serious conversation about serious conversations. California, New Jersey, Maryland, Massachusetts, Rhode Island all have some of America's lowest suicide rates. Why? Because it's hard to get a gun. You know where the suicide rates are the highest? In Senator Joe Manchin's West Virginia and Senator Mitch McConnell's Kentucky. Isn't it interesting that the leading Republican and the leading conservative Democrat, Joe Manchin, they both represent states with the highest suicide rates in America. And instead of doing anything to low su lower suicide rates for their constituents, they are instead making it easier and easier for the rest of the country to catch up with West Virginia and Kentucky. This country, America, is getting dragged into the gutter by Manchin and McConnell, not just because of our permissive gun laws. America is committing slow motion suicide, and our politicians are literally handing us the weapons to do so. This, this country is committing collective suicide because the senators and Congress people who represent the states with the highest suicide rates want to drag us all down with them. From our for-profit healthcare system to our climate change denial to the proliferation of guns, we are committing collective suicide. After this weekend's racially motivated massacre of, America, of African Americans in Buffalo, Republican Liz Cheney said, we need to have a serious talk about white supremacy. No, we need to get rid of guns. Idaho, the state Liz Cheney represents, has one of the highest suicide rates in America because it's easy to get a gun. We need to get rid of the guns, period. We're never going to prevent everyone from identifying as white nationalists. We're never going to get people to have, we're never going to uh, prevent people from having suicidal thoughts. 
What we do to what we need to do is make sure they can't act out on any of these thoughts. We need to get rid of the guns. Total war against guns. If you don't like the government, if you fear the government, participate in your government. Don't stock up on guns. But the oligarchs want people who hate the government to buy guns because then they do nothing about the government. The richest 1% use government and guns the same way they use brown people. Government is the enemy, not the oligarchs. So go buy guns to protect yourself from the evil government. Don't try to change the government, just buy guns so you can continue to believe you're safe from your corporate owned government. The oligarchs demonize government and brown people and then convince Americans that the answer is staying inside, staying home, disengaging from the community while polishing your guns. Now, Mark Esper, Donald Trump's Secretary of Defense, is promoting a new book. One of the tidbits, Donald Trump ordered him to shoot Black Lives Matter protesters. The president said, can't you just shoot them? You know, just shoot them in the legs or something. The media was all over this. But of course, they ignored the serious question that Donald Trump asked. Quote, can't you just shoot them in the legs or something? When I read that, I thought, yeah, why can't we just shoot them in the legs or something. How many times do we read about police shooting an unarmed black man or a senior citizen brandishing a butter knife? How often do we read of police killing someone with just one shot? How come, as Donald Trump asked, the police never just shoot them in the legs or something? Because American police are trained to shoot, to kill. Studies show that most police officers in America are instructed that when you fire a gun, you shoot to kill. Shoot to kill. Even when the suspect is unarmed, shoot to kill. And most American leaders and citizens accept that. And it's suicide. No other first world country would instruct its police to shoot to kill. Then again, no other rich country is awash in 400 million guns. Shoot to, shoot to kill. It's cleaner. The suspect is dead. It's the officer's word against a dead person. And if the body cam is accidentally turned off, plant evidence. The question should not be, why do I hate the police? The question is, why do the police hate us? Well, it's because we are participating in a slow motion suicide, turning police into judge, jury and executioners. 70% of Americans in jail never had a trial. They are either waiting for a trial or lack the resources for a real lawyer. So they just end up playing out. The Sixth Amendment guarantees a speedy trial with an attorney provided by the state. We no longer have a Sixth Amendment in America when 70 percent of Americans in trial in jail have no, not had a trial. We don't have a Sixth Amendment, but we do have a Second Amendment. Every time a cop pulls over a suspect, that suspect knows he's not getting a trial. 70 percent of Americans in jail never get a trial. You get arrested, you're going to jail. And if you're poor, if you're a person of color, no trial, no tr you're doing time. And the cop pulling the suspect over because of our Second Amendment, he automatically assumes that suspect has a gun. This is a recipe for suicide. When cops pull someone over, they often run. The suspects run because even if they're innocent, they're going to plea out because there's no Sixth Amendment. And the cops shoot them in the back because the cops think every suspect has a gun because way too many cops are ignorant, racist cowards who think everyone, especially black men, are carrying guns. And in a way, you can almost forgive the cops for thinking that because way too many people are carrying guns. The same way you can forgive the suspect for running because if he gets arrested, he's staying in jail, guilty or not guilty and no trial. Maybe we should stop telling cops to shoot to kill. Maybe try shooting the unarmed black men in the legs, you know, as if they were white. There's a term for instructing police to shoot to kill. It's called suicide by cop. 
as a nation, we are collecting, collectively committing suicide by cop. No other rich nation with a democracy or something resembling a democracy would ever allow this. We are suicidal. This country is suicidal. We have a government that doesn't listen to us. Civically speaking, Americans are despondent. So we either lash out like the imbecilic racist morons on January 6th who stormed the Capitol, or we just give up like the 100 million of us who don't vote or the nearly 200 million of us who think voting is the best you can do. We are powerless. How many people in America see no point to civic participation? participation, practically everyone. So as a nation, we are committing collective suicide. We have allowed the abusive liars, the bullies and the sociopaths to take charge. The Republicans are bullies, liars and sociopaths. They love for profit violence overseas or here at home, and they will say whatever it takes to ensure America is awash in for profit violence. The Democrats are feckless. Every time there's a mass shooting, a big one, they tell us they're introducing new legislation that will address the constellation of reasons for gun violence. There is no constellation of reasons for gun violence other than guns. Gun violence is caused by a constellation of different types of assault weapons which need to be taken off the street period. This is not about mental health. This is not about income inequality or white supremacy. This is a problem of sick people getting their hands on guns. Guns make us less free. That shooter in Buffalo said some things in school a year ago, so they whisked him away for a day and a half of psychiatric evaluation. They were able to get him to stop saying he was going to kill black people, but they couldn't stop him from thinking about killing black people. They can't stop somebody from thinking about killing black people. So the best thing you can do is make it impossible for these people to go out and buy enough weapons to be a mercenary in Ukraine. The guy who sold this 18 year old kid the gun said it was a perfectly normal transaction. The fact that that transaction was normal indicates just how sick America has become. We need to get rid of the guns. We can get rid of white supremacy. We can get rid of suicidal thoughts. But first and foremost, get rid of the guns so nobody can act out on their white supremacy and suicidal thoughts. But the senators and Congress people who represent the states with the highest suicide rates, Manchin, Cheney and McConnell have no problem with Americans dying from suicide or gun violence. The deranged are killing us. Guns do not make us safer. We are told that the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And that remains unchallenged. It's a bold faced lie, which is why I say we need to have a serious conversation about serious conversations in America. There was a massacre of African-Americans in Buffalo over the weekend. There was a good guy with a gun. There was an ex cop working as a security guard inside that supermarket. His name was Aaron Salter Jr. He was with the Buffalo police for decades. He was hired as a security guard to be in that store with a gun. This just this wasn't just some good guy with a gun who happened to be carrying a gun when the bad guy with a gun started shooting. This was a paid good guy with a gun, a retired police officer with a gun. And when that 18 year old opened fire, former police officer Aaron Salter, the good guy with a gun shot at him. But the good guy's bullets couldn't pierce the bad guy's armor. The good guy with a gun was then shot to death by the bad guy with a gun. There is no such thing as a good guy with a gun. A good guy with a gun is always outgunned. A good guy with a gun is caught by surprise and unprepared. The bad guy with the gun has been planning his attack for days, if not years. Good guys with guns, no matter how great their marksmanship, miss always miss in the heat of battle. Soldiers, cops, panic in the heat of battle. Good guys with a gun are not psychopaths. They take a shootout personally and they miss their shots. 
So that was a cop with a gun shot to death in Buffalo. Imagine how an ordinary citizen carrying a gun behaves when he sees a bad guy with a gun. They fail all the time. There is never, and I mean never, a story of a bad guy with a gun getting stopped by a good guy with a gun. Those stories don't exist. It never happens. The police will eventually show up and kill the bad guy with a gun, but not before the bad guy with the gun has killed five, 10, 15, 20 innocent people. Well, there was another shooting over the weekend. One person was killed, five wounded, inside a Laguna Woods, California church on Sunday. The shooter is alive. He was arrested. Parishioners ran towards the guy, knocked him to the ground, hawk tied him with an electrical wire, and called the police. Turns out, interestingly enough, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a couple of good guys with some electrical wire. Imagine if instead of hog tying the shooter with electrical wire, a proverbial good guy with a gun shot back at the bad guy with the gun inside the church. How many more dead would there be? Good guy with a gun versus bad guy with a gun. The cops show up, they see a good guy with a gun and they see a bad guy with a gun. They also see bodies all over the place. And now our cops need to figure out who's the bad guy with the gun and who's the good guy. Who's the bad guy with the gun and who's the good guy? The fact that cops allow the proliferation of guns in America, guns that end up killing cops, they allow these guns. The fact that cops allow this, it's suicide. As a nation, we are committing collective suicide. I don't know about you. I don't want to commit suicide. I want to live. I want to enjoy nature and people and, you know, take care of others. Maybe walk and take a walk and not worry about getting shot. The way we permit the richest 1% in America to exploit us is nothing short of suicide. Suicide for all of us, including the billionaires who are exploiting us. If you're a billionaire, you need people to work for you. And if the people working for you don't have adequate health care, they will make you sick. They will kill you. If your employees are abused, overworked and underpaid, they make your company less valuable. It is a rare corporation that mistreats its workers and still remains profitable. One such outlier is Amazon. Amazon sort of has been able to abuse workers and somehow stay profitable, but not really. Amazon abused its workers for nearly two decades before it finally turned a profit. Greed and abuse of workers is not a good business model. And right now, Amazon is not all that profitable. Crapping on your employees for everyone is financial suicide. Amazon is barely profitable. Its, its revenue is expansive, but not its profit. It is an inefficient company. It spends a lot of money to get very little back in return. In 2020, Amazon made a profit in one year of $21 billion. $21 billion, all the pain Amazon has cost, shutting down Main Street, putting thousands of bookstores, record stores, mom and pop retail stores out of business. And all it made in profit was $21 billion. This is suicide that we allow this to happen. All, all Jeff Bezos has to show for his vulture capitalism is $21 billion in profits. Had the Justice Department stepped in, most of those retail, retail stores would still be open and they lack the economy of scale to warehouse their employees. So these individual stores would still be opening and unlike Amazon, they would generate close to, you know what, a trillion dollars in profits? not 21 billion, and they would pay taxes on those profits. How is Amazon good for our economy? How is Amazon good for our GDP? They raised Retail America. Retail America is a trillion, multi-trillion dollar industry. And all Amazon has to show for it in 2020 is $21 billion in profits. This is suicide. This is suicide. What can we do about it?
Well, most Americans are catatonic when it comes to economics. We have been trained to believe, well, Jeff Bezos is all part of the free market. Listen to me, there is no such thing as a free market. The government controls and creates the marketplace. The government controls how much money is pumped into the economy and how much is taken out. The oligarchs want you to think the government only gets in the way because the oligarchs own our government and they don't want anybody else getting in the way. They don't want you getting any ideas in your head that you can control our government. You Americans, the oligarchs want you Americans to just continue to hate your inefficient, ineffective government, hate brown people. And then your only civic responsibility, buy more guns because the government can't protect you. The, gun me, the, the government is the enemy. No civic engagement. Don't vote. Just stay home and get guns. Our, our government. Our government, as it is right now, since Reagan, is in the business of transferring your tax dollars to the people who don't pay taxes, people like Jeff Bezos. And because Jeff Bezos doesn't pay taxes, Jeff Bezos has plenty of money sitting around to buy our politicians so he can make sure he, he gives no money to the government, just the politicians, right? He gives no money to the IRS while getting millions billions and billions of dollars from that very same government he trains the rest of us to demonize. We are subsidizing Jeff Bezos's destruction of our financial lives. It's suicide. It is collective suicide. There is no free market. The government is the market. Anyone who says government doesn't create jobs is either ignorant, a liar, or both. 25% of America's workforce, 84 million Americans work directly or indirectly for the federal government. I'm not talking about state and local. 25% of America's workforce is, uh, is uh, working directly or indirectly for the federal government. The federal budget this year will top six trillion dollars. Now, when you factor in state and local government, more than one third of our entire economy is government spending. One third of our entire economy is government spending. Government creates jobs. There is no free market. There is no capitalism. There is no Marxism. There is no anarcho syndicalism. There is and only is and only has been government. You want to change the country, you take control of government spending, period. You want to change the prisons, the cops, immigration. You want to save the planet, our schools. You want to get rid of student debt, improve working conditions, you name it get control of federal spending. That's it. The oligarchs want you to think it's impossible. All you need to do is demand from our government the same exact thing the oligarchs demand from the government, money. It's that simple. This is a war for money. That's it. The oligarchs have your money. They took it from us by taking over the government and the government runs the economy. We need to take our money back from the oligarchs. It's just that simple. Money. Forget your Marxist critiques of capitalism and start learning the difference between dynamic scoring versus static scoring of a Medicare for all bill. So far this year, Joe Biden has cut the budget deficit by $1.6 trillion. I talked about this on the last show. Federal spending on Americans, not oligarchs, results in surpluses. And last year, this government spent trillions on ordinary Americans. The problem is it creates a demanding workforce. When people have money in their pockets, they don't want to take any shit from Jeff Bezos. A dynamic scoring of Medicare for all suggests that Medicare for all would uh, would put a dent, not increase the budget deficit. I explained all of this in our previous show. Medicare for all pays for itself. 
But for-profit hospitals, for-profit health insurance companies own our government. They can't live without government largesse. So they want you and me to stay out of the conversation. They want us to think it's this fictitious free market that provides you with all this superior health care, which is the worst in the industrialized world while being the most expensive. None of these health care companies would, could exist, would exist without Medicare, Medicaid, federal subsidies, and most importantly, your tax dollars. This is a transfer of wealth your tax dollars into the pockets of Aetna, every health insurance company, every for-profit and non-profit hospital. There is no free market, it's the government. The oligarchs can only be oligarchs by doing what the Russian and Ukrainian oligarchs did, loot federal, state, and local government spending. Here in America, that accounts for nearly one third of our entire economy. The oligarchs call this capitalism, but we know, and it's been called by Bernie, socialism for the rich. When they fail, when these banks, when these oil companies and auto companies fail, they get bailed out with even more of your money. When they want to build a stadium with their name on it or a headquarters, they are given enough in local tax subsidies that it costs them nothing to hire the people working in those buildings, those headquarters and stadiums. Local governments in America compete for the privilege of paying the salaries of every employee who is given a job on a movie set, a factory, a, an office park or, or a stadium. When Amazon builds a crappy warehouse, the local government showers them with tax subsidies because they're somehow convinced Amazon is creating jobs. So the local government says pretty much through tax subsidies, we'll pay everybody's salary. It's, it's good for the economy. It is the government, local, state and federal, that is paying for those jobs. If you work for Amazon, your salary is paid by local tax subsidies, not Jeff Bezos. When's the last time a bookstore owner got a subsidy from the local government to pay the salaries of their employees? We have it set up now in this country so that the government will only subsidize shitty jobs in fulfillment centers that are anything but fulfilling. This is suicidal. There is no free market. 25% of America's paychecks come from the federal government. And I'm not including state and local. Again, one third of the economy is government spending. So let's focus on the federal government. The federal government is good for business because it awards countless contracts to business to work for the federal government. Roads, bridges, the internet, that's your tax dollars being handed over to contractors, right? The government is legally obligated to make sure there are strings attached to these contracts. These jobs go to contractors, businesses that pay their taxes. That's what the law says. You have to, if you want to do business with the government, you can't owe any taxes. You have to obey environmental and most importantly, work and safety law. The government is legally obligated to only grant federal contracts to corporations that obey the law. If they don't obey the law, then they are disbarred. That's what it's called. A corporation gets disbarred. And that means they are disbarred. They're, they're forbidden from getting government contracts. You want to clean up Wall Street? You want to clean up the environment? You want to improve worker safety, you want more unions, you, you make sure the federal government stops funding corporations that break the law. One of the larger beneficiaries of government contracts is Amazon. But Amazon doesn't pay taxes. Amazon is an illegal corporation. It engages in wage theft, union busting, race and gender discrimination, to name just a few of the corporate crimes Amazon commits on a daily basis. Amazon is illegal. Jeff Bezos is an illegal. 
Monopolies and predatory pricing are crimes. Amazon is illegal. When the federal government awards contracts, it has a statutory responsibility to guarantee that government contracts, government spending does not go to illegals like Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is an illegal. He's an illegal. Chuck Schumer's Harvard Law School graduate of a daughter, Jessica Schumer, is a lobbyist for Amazon. The daughter of the Senate Majority Leader, Jessica Schumer, is a lobbyist from Am for Amazon. Nancy Pelosi owns millions of dollars worth of stock in Amazon. Jeff Bezos violates labor law, creates horrible working conditions, fails to obey the National Relations Board, and punishes union organizers by firing them. And then when Amazon workers finally get one shop that votes to go union, Amazon's lawyers step in and refuse to recognize the union in violation of the law. Amazon is illegal. Jeff Bezos is illegal. This is not a difference of opinion. It's a fact. Jeff Bezos runs a criminal syndicate. So how does Nancy Pelosi deal with that? She scoops up shares of Amazon right at the beginning of the pandemic. And Chuck Schumer, well, his daughter, Jessica, Harvard Law School graduate, lobbies for Amazon. He takes donations from Amazon and spreads those donations to other Democrats so he can remain majority leader. Joe Biden's and Barack Obama's former press secretary is now Jeff Bezos's press secretary, Jay Carney, which is why Amazon, despite paying zero taxes, gets so much of your tax dollars through government contracts. We allow this to happen because we are participating in a collective suicide and nobody reports this because Amazon is one of the biggest advertisers in the world. Colin Jost is never going to make jokes about this because he does commercials for Amazon. And all this, all this, how Amazon is destroying our economy, our government, our lives, for what? For $20 billion a year in profits. All this damage, 1 million employees in America exploited by Amazon, tortured by Amazon, Main Street decimated for $20 billion in profits. That's all Amazon can report, $20 billion in profits in 2020. Are you kidding me? This is suicide. I mean, if you're going to destroy local economies and the lives of one million employees, at least make more than $20 billion a year. Well, here is what Bernie recently said about Amazon. Amazon has done everything possible, legal and illegal, to defeat union organizing efforts. The National Labor Relations Board, NLRB, found that Amazon's flagrant disregard of the law infringed on workers' legal rights to a free and fair union election in Bessemer, Alabama, ruling that Amazon's behavior was, quote, dangerous and improper. That is the National Labor Relations Board. To date, there are currently 59 unfair labor cases against Amazon pending at the NLRB. Amazon is currently being sued by the NLRB to reinstate a worker who was illegally fired for organizing a union. Several current and former employees have alleged that Amazon has engaged in illegal harassment and discrimination based on race, gender, and sexual orientation. And that's not all. Amazon has already been penalized more than $75 million for breaking federal discrimination and labor laws. Amazon misclassifies delivery, delivery drivers as independent contractors rather than employees to evade tax, wage, and benefit responsibilities. Amazon's inadequate workplace safety policies also pose grave risks to workers, and I hope we'll be able to discuss that a little bit today. If you can believe it, Amazon has a 150% turnover rate, 150%. Workers come into these warehouses, 
They all worked as hard as humanly possible, and then they leave, often crushed. And a whole set of new workers then comes in to replace them. Is that really the kind of business model that we should be rewarding with massive federal contracts? Further, in some locations, Amazon's workplace injury rates are more than two and a half times the industry average, and that may be understating the case because not all injuries are reported. Last December, six Amazon workers died after they were, requ were required to continue working during unsafe weather conditions in a warehouse that did not have appropriate safety facilities or policies. It is abundantly clear that time and time again, Amazon has engaged in illegal anti-union activity. Further, Amazon cannot even come to grips with the reality that the workers in Staten Island won their union election fair and square. In order to stall the process out, their lawyers have appealed that decision, result to the NLRB. Their strategy is obvious. They're gonna stall and stall and stall. In every way possible, they are refusing to negotiate a first fair contract with the Amazon labor union. The system is broken. Amazon is exploiting while breaking the system and benefiting from the government. The National Security Agency has secretly awarded a contract worth up to $10 billion to Amazon Web Services. No government, not the federal government, not the state government, and not any city government should be handing out corporate welfare to union busters and labor law violators. Go on, you miracle of democracy, Bernie Sanders, you. Taxpayer dollars should not go to companies like Amazon who repeatedly break the law. And we're talking about billions and billions of dollars in contracts. Continue. We already did debar, we already prevent federal contractors who don't pay their taxes uh, from getting government contracts, right? It, it makes sense that if, uh, if you're not paying your taxes on time, you shouldn't benefit from a, a contract uh, where the taxpayers are, are funding uh, it. That's Senator Chris Von Holland from Maryland, who had a stroke over the weekend, and we wish him the best. We are talking about billions and billions of dollars going to an illegal Jeff Bezos, who wants the government contract to land on the moon. Uh, now, as uh, Democratic Senator Chris Von Holland, get better, we need you, uh, pointed out two weeks ago, the federal government has every right to deny businesses uh, the federal government's business if you're breaking the uh, law. And uh, we deny federal contracts to illegals all the time. The Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill passed last year adheres to 1931's Davis-Bacon Act, which says any contractors hired by the federal government must pay a livable wage. This goes back to the Hoover administration, strings attached to federal contracts. That's uh, Hoover was a Republican. Last year, Joe Biden issued an executive order that said anyone working for the federal government, anyone working for a contractor paid by the federal government must be vaccinated. In January of this year, the Supreme Court shot down his vaccine mandate, but upheld OSHA's or any other regulatory body's right to dictate the terms of contracting with the federal government. The federal government disbars illegal corporations from the federal largesse all the time. Right, Senator Van Hollen? Given that we already have these provisions in place for violating tax laws, service contract laws, and other circumstances, um, why wouldn't we also say that for contractors who are uh, engaged in serious violations uh, of labor law, that they would be uh, prohibited from getting federal contracts, at least for some period of time. Why wouldn't we? Because Nancy Pelosi owns millions of dollars worth of Amazon stock. Chuck Schumer's idiot daughter, Jessica, graduate of Harvard Law School, is a lobbyist for Amazon. Jessica Schumer, Harvard Law, uh, Harvard Law School, uh, 
or maybe it's Harvard and then Yale Law School. Her father is Senate Majority Leader. She can have him pull whatever spring uh, strings she wants, and she chooses to lobby for Amazon. Hey, Chuck Schumer, you're my senator. Your daughter is a waste of a human being. We no longer have a government, a Democratic Party that sides with unions. We no longer have a government or a Democratic Party that sides with unions. But maybe, just maybe, things are about to change. Here's Bernie on Joe Biden's campaign promise to unions back in 2020. During the presidential campaign, then-candidate Joe Biden promised them to institute a multi-year federal debarment for all employers who illegally oppose unions and to, quote, ensure federal contracts only go to employers who sign neutrality agreements committing not to run anti-union campaigns, end of quote. That was what candidate Joe Biden said. Joe Biden sucking up to unions in 2020, said he would disbar any corporation from getting federal contracts if they violated the law, labor law. More importantly, they had to show neutrality, neutrality when it came to their workers voting to go union. Neutrality means you can't fire or threaten to fire union uh, organizers. You can't cut union organizers hours. And most importantly, you can't hold what are called captive meetings with your employees. And you can't spread lies and propaganda about why they should vote against a union. A neutrality pledge means no lawyers get flown into each shop then meeting privately with each employee to figure out how they're going to vote and then placing their name in a file and listing them either as pro or anti-union. It is against the law to do that. President Biden, more than any other president uh, in my lifetime, has talked over and over again about being pro-union. And I appreciate the president's words and I believe him to be sincere. He is pro-union. In my view, however, the time for talk is over. The time for action is now. The time for action is now. And with the stroke of a pen, an executive order, Joe Biden can make sure the federal government doesn't award federal contracts to companies that violate labor law. Bernie Sanders is chairman of the Senate Budget Committee, and he held a hearing earlier this month to investigate corporations who violate labor law and then look into ways Joe Biden could right now with the stroke of a pen disbar companies like Amazon who reach routinely violate labor law. This they violate labor law. They should not be receiving federal contracts. There are hundreds of corporations in the United States, including some of the very largest, that receive federal contracts that amount to many billions of dollars. They receive huge subsidies, they receive special tax breaks, and they receive all kinds of corporate welfare, despite the fact that these very same companies are engaged in widespread illegal behavior including massive violations of labor law. And the question that we're asking today is a very simple one. Should federal taxpayer dollars go to companies that violate labor law and illegally prevent workers from exercising their constitutional rights to join a union? And of course, this was hardly covered by the media because Amazon is one of the biggest advertisers in the world. The ranking member of the Senate Budget Committee is Republican Lindsey Graham, and he didn't like the idea of these hearings. He said the midterms are coming up and he told us what kind of hearings he will be holding if Republicans controlled the Senate and he's chairman of the Budget Committee. If we get the committee back, we're not going to do this. Yeah, he told Bernie Sanders these hearings were an embarrassment. This is a heavy handed approach, the most radical agenda in my lifetime. Graham says holding these hearings to discuss withholding federal funds from illegals makes this the most radical agenda of his lifetime. Prone to hyperbole, are we, Lindsay? Greg Abbott of Texas wants to deny government-funded education and baby formula to what to who he describes as illegals. 
But that's not radical. The Hyde Amendment denies federal funding to overseas abortion providers. That's not radical. The Republicans don't want Obamacare to cover abortion or contraception for women. That's not radical. But making sure the federal government stops paying Amazon to abuse one million workers, that's radical. Bernie? Responding briefly to Senator Graham, I think he suggested that a hearing like this is radical. You know what? I think he's right. In a Congress dominated by corporate lobbyists and wealthy campaign contributors, the idea that we would actually hear from the working class of this country is, in fact, radical. Uh, but I make no apologies uh, for that. To which Miss Lindsay responded. Wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> The uh, hearings were interesting and deserved a lot more coverage than they received. Here's Lindsey Graham explaining why there's no need to have these hearings and why there is no need for the federal government to disbar to withhold contracts to corporations that violate labor law. He says there's already a process in place to enforce labor law. As to the process, there's a process in this country. If you feel like uh, the law has been violated in your efforts to unionize uh, the workforce, you can file a complaint. People will have a hearing. And there's a process to debar companies who engage in illegal behavior. There is a process. This is a political process here. This is an effort to get an outcome you want using the United States Senate as your vehicle. This is very dangerous. How dare you use the United States Senate to help Americans get an outcome they want? There's no place in the American Senate for people coming here to get an outcome they want. That's very, very dangerous. If we take this body back, this demonization of individual companies that are subject to the law will cease. Which is why everyone should vote for the GOP they will stop demonizing demons and instead demonize people of color like this guy. Okay. There he is. Let's get to work. Christian Smalls. That's right. Two weeks ago, Christian Smalls, founder of the Amazon Labor Union, had his day in Washington and testified before Bernie's budget committee. He had some choice words for Lindsey Graham. First of all, I want to address Mr. Graham. First of all, you know, you're, it sounded like you was talking about more of the companies and the businesses in your speech, but you forgot that the people are the ones who make this, these companies operate. And then we're not protected. The process for when we hold these companies accountable is not working for us. Then that's not what, that's the reason why we're here today. That's the reason why I'm here to represent the workers who make these companies go. And I think that it's in your best interest to realize that it's not a, a left or right thing. It's not a Democrat or a Republican thing. It's a workers thing. It's a workers issue. And we're the ones that are suffering in the corporations that you're talking about, in the businesses that you're talking about, in the warehouses that you're talking about. So that's the reason why I think I was invited today to speak on that behalf. And you should listen because we do represent your constituents as well. Um, so just take that into consideration that the people are the ones that make these corporations go. It's not the, it's not the other way around. Well, one would think that Miss Lindsay would then show Christian Smalls a modicum of respect. Instead, Miss Lindsay reprised her role from the Brett Kavanaugh hearings as the rejected suitor. You've determined Amazon is a piece of crap company. That's your political bias. They're subject to the laws of the United States. They shouldn't be subject to this. Yes, an open hearing where Christian Smalls tells Congress and the world how Amazon violates the law. There's, there's no reason to do this out in the open. Are we animals? I'm here to say that if you're a business, you can have a say too about your workforce. The idea that you can only get a government contract if you promise to be neutral is ridiculous. That's the law, Miss Lindsay. You have to be neutral. You have to obey the law. The idea that people should be punished for violating the law is ridiculous. 
You're supposed to be neutral. That's the law of the land. The hearings proceeded to go downhill from there for Lindsay when he tried to lecture Christian Smalls. That's what's radical here is we've taken a single company. You've brought people making accusations. There's a legal system in this country to complain about unfair labor practices. But what you've done here today is you've tried and convicted Amazon. You've taken anecdotal testimony and said, it's, you know, Amazon is the worst uh, offender on the planet uh, of, 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 of the workplace. All I can say is that Mr. Smalls, have you filed a complaint when you thought you were wrong? Have I? Yes. The Attorney General of the State of New York has on my behalf. Okay, but, but you had a process where somebody could advocate for your interest. There is a process that's not working. Exactly. There's a process that, that's not working because Ms. Lindsay keeps the process from working by not funding the process. If 70% of people in jail never had a trial, what chance do you think American workers have getting the government to step up and help them stand up to bullies like Jeff Bezos? OK, Christian Smalls, tell Miss Lindsay how the process is stacked against union organizers. What did Jeff Bezos do? They used the police to intimidate the workers. There was a presence, a large presence in Bessemer. I remember when I went down there for the first campaign, they had police at every entrance. Same thing in Staten Island, they used the police at all our demonstrations. Myself and two other organizers were arrested, not once, but twice. And we're still sitting here as we speak on papers because of that. So in America, the police work for management, not labor, which is why police unions are the worst unions in the world. OK, but Christian Smalls, you just won the union vote at the Amazon Fulfillment Center out on Staten Island. So the process worked, right? So you can have a union shop on Staten Island right now, right? And even though we may have won, we did everything right, assuring Amazon to recognize our victory and comply with our legal obligation to meet us at the bargaining table. But Amazon is refusing to do so. As you mentioned, they're going to stall. They filed in 25 objections and they got the NLRB to move the hearing to a whole nother location. So Miss Lindsay thinks it's insane to deny contracts to a company just because they don't exhibit neutrality in a union vote, even though neutrality is the law. Amazon is legally obligated to be neutral during a union election. Did they obey that law? Were they neutral? Amazon flies in um, hundreds of union busters from all over the country, um, all over, pretty much all over the world. There's some that come from overseas as well. They come into the facility. They isolate workers every single day, question them, pretty much gaslighting them, acting like they are working to improve the conditions. But really, they are just polling to see who's pro-union, who's not. They report that information back to management. Lindsey Graham says there's a process and all you need to do is go through the process and it's it's a level playing field. To me, it just sounds like the corporations have the control and they control whatever they want. They break the law to get away with it. They know that already, that breaking the law during these election campaigns won't be resolved during the election campaigns. So they purposely continue to break the law. All right, Christian, but this is America and workers have their own agency. They can't be intimidated. So imagine being a new hire at Amazon your second day. You don't even know your job assignment. And the first thing they do is march you into a anti-union propaganda class. That doesn't sound neutral. What else do they do? They post and plaster the building with anti-union propaganda. You walk in, the first thing you see is vote no. Uh, you walk in, the first thing you see is union dues coming out of your check. They calculate union dues without even knowing how a union operates. Um, they pretty much spread rumors and lies about the union members trying to claim that this independent worker-led union that are all Amazon workers are some third party. Um, they lied and said that, um, you know, the union dues, the money is going to go towards um, my financial gain. Um, Pretty much they demonized myself as the union representative um, saying that I have a vendetta 
because I was fired two years ago wrongfully. That doesn't sound neutral. That sounds like it's against the law. Senator Hollins from Maryland, many of Christian's organizers were fired, including Christian. Do you have any more questions? So, Mr. Smalls, you, you know, Mr. Bryson, uh, wh why do you believe, why did Amazon fire Mr. Bryson? He's black. Number two, he was protesting alongside with myself and others uh, over COVID-19, which was running rampant at the time. New York was the epic center. So they wanted to once again silence the organizers that were advocating for that, uh, myself included. You know, I'm still unemployed as we speak. Tell us about Dequan Smith. Daquan Smith was fired by the company for organizing. He's still out of a job. He's living in a shelter right now. Uh, we raise money through GoFundMe. And you? Including myself, who's been out of a job for the last two years. Senator? And when, when a company like Amazon takes that kind of action in, in retaliation for uh, a, a protest, uh, does that make it more difficult for you to organize? Of course it does. It's an intimidation factor. You know, they fire the people that are speaking up. Um, uh, everybody else wouldn't want to come forward because they think it's going to happen to them. So Lindsey Graham is right. There is a process and it's working for everyone except the workers. Let's go back to Senator Chris Von Hollen. So, you know, and, and here's the thing about our system. Um, it took two years or a little longer than two years for this particular case to wind its way uh, through the NLRB and get a decision from an LRB judge, an LRB judge. Um, and, and, you know, by that time, the damage is uh, already done, not just to uh, the person wrongfully fired, but also uh, to the organizing uh, effort. We've just got to dramatically improve uh, this uh, system. And that's why we want to provide additional resources to the NLRB and, and make other reforms. But Lindsey Graham wasn't going to hear any of these hearings. The number of people joining unions in this country is going way down. Is it due to the to the abusive behavior of all the companies or is it maybe people want to make an individual choice? Maybe people want to make an indiv individual choice to keep their mouths shut and not get fired, Lindsay. Joe Thompson was on last week's show. They organized for Starbucks. They won two Starbucks elections last week. Joe Thompson did a pretty good job answering Lindsey Graham's question as to why workers will often vote against joining a union. Why do uh, we lose union votes. What, what does corporate America do to stack it against us? It's, it's all about union busting. So Starbucks hired the largest union busting firm in all of, the, all of America, Littler Mendelssohn. And then they come into your store. They tell you if you vote for the union, you're going to lose your benefits. You're going to lose all these additional things. And they really do make it seem that the unions are the devil. You know, it's an outside force attacking us, as Howard Schultz put it. And in the reality, it's, it's 19 year olds like me who are talking to my coworkers, building a partnership between ourselves to fight for things that we want. And, you know, I, I think when it comes down to it, it's we're losing these votes, not because people aren't pro union. It's because the union busters are getting their way and the NLRB doesn't have the resources, staffing and adequate funding to actually stop Starbucks and Amazon and any other union busting company from truly doing the harm that is happening with this union busting across the entire United States. It's about union busting. Tell me about Starbucks intimidation. What happened with you? Tell me about organizing with you and what Starbucks tried to do to you. How did they try to stop you? So they, you know, the first thing they did was cut my hours. You know, I was working about 20 hours a week. That's the, you know, the bare minimum to get benefits. Sometimes I'd work a little bit more up to 25 or 30. Uh, but there was about four or five weeks while I was only working 10 hours a week. And that, that cut my paycheck a lot. Christian Smalls. Thousands of workers across this country who are in the process of organizing, who have the desire to organize in the United States. Um, we want to feel that we have protections. <clears throat> we want to feel that the government is allowing us to use our constitutional rights to organize. 
How dare you? First, we allow you your constitutional rights to organize. Next thing, you'll be demanding your constitutional right to a trial. Lindsey Graham, save us from this anarchy. Tell us you're anything but Christian. Smalls. Boeing is in South Carolina making the 787. There's been efforts to unionize Boeing. They lose. Boeing moved to your state, Miss Lindsay, because it's a so-called right to work state. Boeing is a arms contractor. They are in the might makes right business. That's why they do business in South Carolina where might makes right. Lindsey Graham would never hold hearings to learn how his constituents in South Carolina, how their lives were destroyed when they attempted to practice their constitutional right to organize Boeing. Time after time, Republicans have proven themselves opposed to democracy, and they have no problem fixing elections, whether they fix elections for government office or whether or not they fix elections on whether or not a shop goes union. For Republicans, elections aren't a popularity contest. Elections are all about serving the corporate powers. Republicans don't want to be liked. They don't care if they win honestly. They hate themselves. They ha Lindsey Graham is a homosexual and he's a Republican because he doesn't come to terms with his own homosexuality. So he hates himself. Lindsey Graham hates who he is. So he's not trying to win a popularity contest. He wants to fix elections so the bullies don't pick at him. Well, also at the hearings was Senator Tim Kaine from Virginia. He was Hillary Clinton's running mate back in 2016. Finally, a Democrat. Let's see how a Democrat treats uh, Christian Smalls. My, my view is coming from the way I come from. I come from a very pro-labor household. He's so folksy, Tim Kaine. You gotta love him, right? He's just rumpled and he comes from a, a pro-labor household. He's an ally. So tell us more about your pro-labor household that you grew up in. My dad ran, was management. He ran an ironworking shop that was organized by the iron workers. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tim Kaine, your dad owned a shop that was forced to go union so why would you be a pro-union household? And my dad was on the uh, Iron Worker Pension Fund as the management representative. Oh, the pension fund. Your dad, let me, let me hear that one more time. This is really important. And my dad was on the uh, Iron Worker Pension Fund as the management representative. My dad was on the Iron Workers Pension Fund as management representative. In other words, the only way he would recognize the union is if management allowed him to join the union so that his family could collect all the benefits, like health benefits, for the, the Keene family. And of course, as a member of the union, he voted inside the union. He attended the meetings. He didn't have to be a spy. He just sat around as a management representative because that's what a union needs, a management representative. And he got to meet all the employees and see what they said at the union meetings. And he was able to spot all the troublemakers so he could fire them because that's exactly how unions are supposed to work. This is a Democrat, by the way. Harvard Law School graduate, Senator Tim Kaine, author of Stronger Together, Stronger Together. He's so sincere, Stronger Together. So what did your dad teach you? He just taught us growing up, unions and management are not, shouldn't be fighting, it should be a team. And I, I hope that's what we're, I hope we're kind of shooting that we would want to be a team without, without, you know, owners kicking, workers around and without employers being demonized. I mean, Democrats, if we if we want to love jobs, we got to also work with those that, that are building companies that create jobs. First of all, Democrats, real Democrats don't love jobs. We, we, we work for our vacation. That's the first thing. But stronger together. Yes, management is stronger when management and labor work as a team, right? That's how that's that's how it works. Be a team. Even if those jobs are illegal, we still love those jobs. So what about Amazon, Senator Tim? 
It's illegal. You just heard all the testimony. You went to Harvard Law. You've read everything you need to know about Amazon. You've read about how Amazon breaks union law, tax law, environmental law, workplace safety and discrimination law. How is that labor and management working as that team, your asshole father who took benefits away from some other iron worker who needed it? Uh, how is that a teamwork? What about Amazon? That can't be part of the team work that your father trained you to believe in. But I don't think Amazon is an organized criminal syndicate. It definitely is um, the way they treat their workers, sir, with all yeah, due respect. Yeah. So, I mean, I know that that's your opinion and you are as sincere in stating that as I am in saying that I think that's a, a vast overstatement. Tim Kaine, you condescending, patronizing, self-serving piece of shit. Here's something that's not a vast overstatement. You're an asshole. I guess Chuck Schumer's daughter is a better lobbyist for Amazon than we thought. Tim Kaine doing Jeff Bezos's dirty work. Well, in all fairness, Senator, who else loves Amazon besides you? And the customers and the customers. And customers that, that use Amazon, they use it because they think it's convenient. And during the pandemic, when they were at home and they didn't want to go to some places because they were worried about their health, Amazon usage went up. We can't wave a magic wand and make customers suddenly not like Amazon. So I, I would say um, I, ju I just don't see it. I hate Tim Kaine more than I hate Lindsey Graham. Tim Kaine's the rumpled, folksy Democrat, the Warren Buffett Democrat who has the nerve to tell Christian Smalls, of all people, that the reason the customers love Amazon is because the workers were the first responders during the pandemic. Customers stayed home, right? And why did they stay home? Because Amazon workers delivered their food and toys. And you know who one of those first responders was? Christian Smalls. And you say that to his face, you piece of shit. Christian Smalls out on Staten Island more than two years ago noticed his first responders weren't uh, fitted with the proper PPE. They weren't getting tested and workers were getting sick and dying. And when he complained, he got fired, Senator and he's been out of a job for more than two years. You just don't see it. When the Democrats lose in November, Tim Kaine, when America loses what's left of this democracy, it's because of Democrats like Senator Tim Kaine, who think it's all about teamwork. Harvard Law School's Chuck Schumer, his Harvard Law School graduate, Jessica Schumer lobbying for Amazon, Harvard Law School's Tim Kaine, Democrats all, they are management. When they go to work for Amazon and they, they already are working for Amazon, but when they officially go to work for Amazon, like Jay Carney, they take management leadership positions. A Democratic Party run by management that claims it's working as a team with management, working as a team with the Republican leadership means the teamwork between the so-called teamwork between labor and management in America is non-existent. It's non-existent. And because Amazon advertises, nobody will dare call Tim Kaine out for what he is for saying that a bullshit artist. Amazon is, in fact, an organized criminal organization that owns the White House and the Senate. And with that, Senator Lindsey Graham excused himself from the hearings, but without first admonishing Senator Bernie Sanders. These hearings on the mountain are in no way whatsoever a slur upon the great Italian people. And then, of course, Jeff Bezos stormed into the room and began shouting at Senator Bernie Sanders. This committee owes an apology. This committee Let's talk about democracy before I wrap it up. Last week, I interviewed David DeJong, author of Nazi Billionaires. I believe Karl Marx believed Germany would be the best place to try communism. Not He, he didn't want it for Russia. He wanted it for Germany. Yeah. Right. So is it fair to say instead Germany embraced 
capitalism. That is very fair to say. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, they did. They did. Absolutely. Okay. At what point did Nazi Germany go from a capitalist state to what? How would you have defined it by 1945? It went from a capitalist state to a capitalist state. It stayed a capitalist state. It stayed a capitalist state. Yeah. So what does that tell us about capitalism? There is no, there is no right or wrong with capitalism. It's always money. It's, uh, at the bottom line, it's always profit. It's always about money. It can, it can turn into, capitalist acts can turn into crime, right? As we saw with the Nazi. And even right. then, it still had the veneer of a business transaction, right, in Germany. It's still at the veneer of a business transaction, of a, regu- of a regular business transaction. So capitalism with no guardrails allows people like Hitler and his supporters to do unconscionable things and sleep at night. It's just transactional. Completely, yes, that is correct. Right. These, these men, the men I write about, the, the, the five patriarchs I write about, had zero qualms about exploiting the system, profiting from it. Christian Smalls? I'm going to let you know right now that on behalf of the Amazon Labor Union and the hundreds of thousands of workers across this country, that we will continue to organize. Anything else? We need to pass the PRO Act so that workers are protected and workers are encouraged to organize. Okay, and anything for Senator Lindsey Graham or Tim Kaine? This is not a left or right thing. This is a working class issue. And the workers at the bottom are the ones who make these corporations go. Senator Graham? Wow. (laughs) 